What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm very excited to share with you uh, a sample library developer that I'm uh, very fond of in terms of their products and their customer service. And they have really been a mainstay in my template, uh, so on so called template for the longest time. And that is the Cinematic Studio series. So this is run by a man named Alex Wallbank and he has a, a wonderful uh, team around him, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, John is the main customer service representative that I've had the privilege to speak with uh, many times. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to share a little bit about this series on, in this video in case you were curious about what the samples kind of sound like and maybe their playability. Um, maybe if you don't have any of these libraries, if you're just curious about how they kind of work and how they sound under the fingertips. And so at the time of this recording, you can see here the percussion is actually not available yet. So um, it's currently the end of 2021. It's possible that 2022, 2023, we might receive that percussion library. But at the time of the recording, we're going to be taking a look at the strings, woodwinds, brass, and also the piano as well. So before we really get into the sounds, um, I want to give you a gift for watching this video. And it's my free sample library buyer's guide. Um, this is something I've talked about before, but I've always received the question of kind of like what samples do you like to use in your daily productions and what do you like to work with on a daily basis and i have to say that the cinematic studio series is usually at the very top of that list so um it's it's not only just due to the ease of use but it's also the sound the legato and for the style of music that i write i really enjoy using these libraries and so it's included in this guide among a whole bunch of others that i do like to use uh, now and then as well so i would just want to give that to you as a gift for watching this video it's also organized by price so you know how much you would be spending on these different libraries and they're just the ones that I would personally recommend if you are in the market for some new libraries. So definitely check it out. It's the first link in the description box below. And uh, it's my, again, my token of appreciation for you checking out this video today. So anyway, let's kind of dive into um, kind of the libraries here and check out their website. So they have their strings, which has their ensemble strings, Cinematic Studio strings. Then we have the solo strings. Um, he also has the Cinematic Strings 2 uh, you know, library listed there, which was kind of the predecessor to the now very well regarded cinematic studio strings. Then we have the brass library, the woodwinds library, and the piano library, which came out at the same time, I believe, as cinematic studio strings. Uh, another really cool thing is that every single library has been made for contact player. So you don't need the full version of contact, which I believe is like 300 or so dollars. If you can't afford that, that's totally okay because these these libraries all work within the contact player, which is a free sampler, okay? And also, the the fact that he doesn't have too many products on the website is also a refreshing thing to look at as well, because lots of developers love to tinker around with different things. You know, they, they experiment with um, non-orchestral things, but they also have orchestral things. But I'm a big fan of um, just simple, keeping things simple and just making sure that the the orchestral samples that they do have are top notch and as good as they can possibly be. And I feel like Alex is um, a perfectionist in a really good way, right? To make sure the samples are as playable and sound as good as possible. So without further ado, let's kind of dive into logic and see what the uh, samples sound like. All right, so now that we're inside the DAW, let's take a look at the different libraries here. I'm gonna start off with the Cinematic Studio Piano and I'll be totally honest right off the bat, I actually don't use this piano library at all at the moment. Uh, just because I personally prefer the tone of something like Cine Piano, which has a slightly more clear and defined sound for me. But I have experimented with this piano in the past where it does seem to sit very well in the context of a fuller mix. So I think it's a, it's a more contextual piano rather than um, a pure solo piano. But of course, you can use it in that context as well. But within, in any case, let's play it a little bit and um, I'll go through the samples. Here we go.
yeah, so I think with a dash of that built-in reverb, it, it can sound pretty nice, actually. So um, I, I know some people who swear by using this piano, and you can see it's relatively lightweight as well, only 201 megabytes for the entire library, which is really cool. Uh, let's move on to probably the most popular string library on the market uh, in terms of like number of copies sold and the number of people who swear by it. So for me personally, this is my go-to string library. If I had to pick one out of the entire uh, you know, string library options out there on the market today, CSS would probably be my go-to for several reasons. Number one, the legato is very, very smooth. Um, the, the, the strings and the performances are very passionate and very vibrato heavy, which for my style of music, I really enjoy using. And also just the overall playability um, seems very responsive under your fingertips. Now there is a little bit of sluggishness in the legato um, about, you know, a, a few... Not, not a second, but like, you know, less than a second of delay, but it, it's there. So you might have to actually tweak the notes by pulling them back a little bit in the DAW to make them kind of fit on the grid. And a lot of people don't like that in terms of their workflow, but I'm personally totally fine with that. So uh, let's have a listen to these strings and then we'll kind of visit the different articulations a little bit as well.
Okay, so you get a sense of the way that the overall patch sounds and the way the, the overall lines flow, right? So my most used patches are probably the sustain patch with the legato turned on. Um, also, the measure tremolos, are I'm a big fan of those. And then occasionally when I do need the shorts that are a little drier and a little more biting, I'll go to the staccato patch. And you have a, a very number of shorts here, right? And these are controlled by mod wheel, which is a quite a, a, an interesting way to control the different articulations, right? So staccato being the shortest one, then you go to staccatissimo by, you know, writing it up and staccato, then sforzano, which is the, the longest of the bunch. <clears throat> and... I have had some trouble programming in the past, you know, in terms of logic, kind of recognizing when the key switch is happening or when, you know, when the automation for the mod wheel is like, is, is at the certain value, but you know, you can always, I think, remap it to your own liking if you want to. And that's always nice to kind of do that yourself, but I'm not really a tinker. I, I'm more of just a plug and play type of person. So if I load in the patch and I, and I want something done relatively quickly, then I'll just do it the way the library has it set up and then just go from there. Okay, uh, let's move on. Let's let's kind of get into the other patches here, and I'll just go through more of the legato so you hear what it sounds like. Um, I, and by the way, I tend to use the mix mic uh, all the time. Uh, I've tried out the different micro microphone positions here, and I, I just I, I like the default mix the most. It is on the drier side, so you you might want to put in some of the internal reverb. But I find that a dash of external reverb with these patches tend to really let the patches sing out, and the the strings really just soar in their own element, which is really pretty. So uh, let's continue on to the second violins. Here we go. Okay, so it's just a couple things to note here. When the mod wheel is all the way at the bottom, you get zero. You get like absolute silence. So that's just a characteristic of this library. And I think you can also toggle that on or off um, for Niente as well. So that's just a cool thing to note. And also, yeah, just the overall performance style is very molto vibrato. There's a lot of passion in, in every single sample. And because there's multiple dynamic layers, right, you can actually crossfade between them with the mod wheel. And the way they've programmed it is, is quite smooth. So you really get a, a nice seamless transition between dynamic layers and it really just breathes, you know, when you're playing in the performance. And that's something that's very important when doing mockups is just making sure you ride that CC1 and make sure you have like volume and expression mapped to it. And maybe even breath control if there's vibrato in there at the same time. But I just like the the convenience of having, you know, volume expression mapped to CC1 in this library. So I don't really have to do very much to get it to sound the way I want it to. So let's keep going here.
All right, so in terms of the overall string signature, you can hear that the sound is a little bit on the darker side. It's, 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 it, you know, sometimes you could even argue it sounds like it has like um, a slight like blanket on top of it. And it, it feels like th there's something warm and mellow about it too. Like it's not very bright, right? And it really fills out this frequency spectrum. Some might say to a fault, right? Like some, some might say it, it kind of clouds up the spectrum a lot. And uh, I have to say there is quite a lot of room tone. So especially when you're mixing these patches, passing them to audio, um, put an EQ on the different tracks. And I would just personally cut out the stuff that's below like 50 Hertz, just to make sure there's no low end noise buildup. Uh, that's pretty important when it comes to working with these strings. And then also applying like a high shelf just to bring out the high detail um, can also very uh, be very helpful just to make these strings sing a little bit more. You might also find there's a bit of a resonant quality in the in the low mids that you don't like as well. So a, a personal taste, but again, it, it doesn't detract me from using this library on a pretty much daily basis because it just sounds so good to me and I just love using it. And then the Cinemax Studio solo strings, interestingly, is not as popular. However, um, when, when it comes to solo strings, I like to use them frequently, you know, and, and for the similar, similar reasons as uh, Cinemax Studio Strings, the ensemble library, it has beautiful legato. The performances are very passionate, very vibrato heavy. And a lot of people say that it actually sounds unrealistic, like with that much vibrato and, you know, kind of at a similar rate, but I actually like that performance style. So it is subjective and some people don't buy it for that reason, but I'm glad I did. So anyway, here, here is the uh, violin one solo. Uh, with a legato. Here we go. Yeah, so the violin two is a really nice alternative to the violin one. I, I would even say that the second violin sounds slightly more natural and even more passionate than the violin one. Um, the violin one definitely has a little bit more presence. It's a little bit louder, and I think it could stand out further in the mix. But violin two, to me, has a little more subtlety in the performance, and there's a little bit more built-in dynamics into the patch, which I really enjoy. Something I should also mention is that the legato speed is adaptive. So just meaning that however fast, or sorry, however hard you play the notes, um, that will also determine the speed of the legato. So if you play harder on the keyboard, if you play with higher velocity, then the legato transitions will actually shorten and will make the connections between the notes a little faster and vice versa as well. So if you play with a really light velocity, you're actually gonna get a portamento slide from one note to another. And you should do this tastefully. Um, one thing that I think mock-up artists uh, don't do correctly at times is they they kind of take the portamento to the extreme and they want to do too much of it. And so it, it kind of results in a, you know, not, not so pleasant sound when the notes are just sliding all over the place. It's not very, you know, common that way. 
Okay, the viola is actually one of my favorite instruments in this library, so let's have a listen to this. Isn't that just gorgeous? Like such a full body tone. And I, I think the viola has a perfect balance between, you know, high frequencies, but also the low frequencies. And there's just such a warmth and, and roundness to that tone that you can't just replicate in other libraries. It's so beautiful. Uh, finally, the cello, here we go. Yeah, and sometimes if you're not careful with the dynamic layers and the way you, the, the mod wheel is triggering, you might hear some of that, uh, you know, those dynamic layers kind of phasing in and out with one another. So just want to be careful, especially if it's an exposed part. Um, you know, you just want to make sure the performance itself is as realistic as possible in terms of the connections of the different layers there. So just be careful with that. All right, so let's move on to the woodwinds. This is the newest addition to the series so far. And there's actually been an update where the legato um, has been, I think, tweaked a little bit. There's an expressive uh, version and a low latency version. So obviously less uh, latency, right? The, the legato will be faster. And then also, I, I personally found a few of the pitches, especially in the higher notes of the flute, um, they were a little bit sharp. So I think this update um, also addressed the tuning there. And then everything else just feels... Uh, very natural as usual. So let's have a listen to the piccolo. Here we go.
All right, that's kind of the first half of this woodwind library. And I gotta say, like for the most part, I enjoy using the flute and the oboe the, probably the most from this library. And it's also really nice to have, you know, all these different ones as well. The bassoon is also a very rich sound. I think I personally prefer the one from Berlin Woodwinds a little bit more. But in terms of the oboe, I, I always either pick this one or the one from, uh, what is it? Uh, let me just open up this other contacts here. Uh, the one from Berlin Woodwinds Expansion B or the soloist, uh, soloist 2, I believe it is. Has all the low woodwinds there. All right, let's keep going here. So now we have the second uh, contact instance pulled up. Um, here we go. Let's have a listen to the English horn. And then we move on to the doubling combinations. So basically we have the solo instruments, but then we also have four uh, combinations here, two oboes, two flutes, two clarinets, and two bassoons. So let's hear this. You know what's really cool? It kind of sounds like there's, you know, the two oboes, but it almost sounds like one of them is like the flute. So, you know, one of them kind of has like a more airy quality. I wonder if that's one of the directions that Alex was giving to the musicians. Like, okay, you know, you can play it a little bit more airy, a little more light, and this, you know, other player played a little more uh, well-rounded, a little richer tone, so you can actually hear the difference between both of those oboes. Um, here's the two flutes.
Okay, so that is kind of, uh, you know, a, a quick playthrough of, of all the patches in Cinematic Studio Woodwinds. And one thing I have to say I really appreciate about, you know, this developer is that all the patches by default are brought down 6 dB in the, in the contact volumes. You know, so you'll never get an instance where the Cinematic Studio series is fighting against another instrument's volume. Like, let's say, Cine samples. They have their samples very loudly mixed um, and shipped inside their packages. So I always have to find myself um, turning down the volumes of all the different patches I'm using, especially the percussion. Cineprec has some very, very loud samples. So I've always been turning them down and uh, making sure they match the, the, the level of the Cinematic Studio series. Because the worst thing we can do is really uh, allow the gain or the level of all the different instruments to pile up and really overload our sequencer and therefore result in digital clipping, which sounds very bad and you know not pleasurable. So it's always better to have um, you know, a little softer of a signal that you can turn up later if you need to. Okay, finally, let's take a look at Cinematic Studio Brass. And then, uh, of course, when the percussion comes out, hopefully I can do a video on that as well. But um, this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful brass library for the same reasons as the other series. Great legato, um, kind of a darker tone, which you might like or might not like. Um, but again, very playable, and it just sounds very natural in an exposed context. So here's the solo trumpet. actually going to do is turn down the volume of these because I know that the sampling has been brought up um, or I mean there, there's a lot of dynamic layers in this library like they recorded a whole bunch of dynamics from very 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 quiet to very loud so I don't want to blow our ears out here just uh see I'm trying to be considerate here you know so forgive my wasting time I should have done this beforehand anyway <laughs> let's hear a little bit more of this Yeah, I think one of the coolest things about this brass library is just the fact that you can choose the amount of repetitions you want uh, from, you know, one or zero or one uh, all the way up to infinite reps. So, you know, you can literally have them just repeat this note on end and, of course, adjust it to your tempo. A little slower and faster. And it sounds good either way. And, of course, you can automatically sync to the host as well. So... By the way, again, something else I have to say is that you see the GUI among the different products is essentially identical for all of them. Only one patch per instrument, and that makes it so easy. Look at this. Look at the folder layout. I can actually load everything within one context view. I don't even have to scroll. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, like, yeah, the piano's at the top, but still, like, this is so, so, you know, well organized. And for me, that that's really useful as someone who's not the most organized. Anyway, let's go to the solo horn.
Just trying not to get copyright strikes here, guys. Okay, so honestly, you're probably not going to play uh, trombone patch at like that forte, fortissimo dynamic for all that time. So uh, it doesn't sound too natural that way, but you know, you get a sense of the dynamic range there. Uh, here's the tuba as well. That is what and fat tuba. And it's just a nice touch that the different velocities uh, trigger different um, dynamic samples, right? So the, the harder you press, like I mentioned before, the louder they're going to play and vice versa. Okay, here are the combinations. So we have two trum trumpets, uh, two trombones, and four horns. So uh, yeah, horns have a very good layering capability. So you can have up to like 12, 15 horns and they'll still sound awesome. So uh, let's have a listen to that. All right, and finally we have the full ensemble. And basically this is all the different instruments put together but kind of in the respective ranges. So uh, you kind of have the trumpets at the top. And then here, kind of in the mid range, you have the uh, horns and the trumpets that are kind of doubled together. And you can turn down the horns, just hear the trumpets, turn up the horns, pull down the trumpets. 
And then of course the trombones and tuba are not currently in play, so um, you won't hear any of those. And then as you go down, trombones and horns here probably, and trumpets, right? And then all the way down, you get the low brass. With that, I bid you adieu. Okay, so anyway, that is the Cinematic Studio series. I apologize for the length of this video, but I did want to kind of demonstrate all the different patches. I didn't get into the microphone positions today. That would be an entirely too long video, but if you're interested, you can definitely check out the walkthroughs on the Cinematic Studio series channel, YouTube channel, and um, there's a whole bunch of other reviews on YouTube that you can kind of look for even more reviews, you know, um, check out the, the different sounds and different performances. But I just wanted to give you a comprehensive patch walkthrough of all the different libraries. And I was very fortunate to receive the woodwinds for review. Um, I did purchase the, the string solo strings and the brass myself, of course. Um, and uh, I was a big fan of the libraries from day one since using them. Again, the main attractions for me are the legatos the overall consistency across the libraries in terms of the playability and uh, the overall, I don't know, just the GUI experience and the, the, the way of how easy it is to work with the libraries. You don't have to learn too much. It's just really easy to just plug and play. Now, that's not to say that there are no flaws with the libraries, of course. I mean, every, every, libraries, uh, every library series, every library has their own little things and niggles that you can't please everyone. Um, but... You know, some could argue that the legato is a little bit slow overall, and you might have to do some tweaking to the MIDI like we mentioned before. That's totally a normal thing to do in virtual land, mock-up land, because samples are not real instruments. I mean, they're not real players playing in real time, so naturally you will have to do some tweaking yourself, which is part of the fun in my in my personal opinion. I, I enjoy doing some MIDI tweaking here and there just to make sure the notes line up, and it's such a joyous feeling when you hear the notes kind of play together in the right time. The other thing is, again, the sound signature is on the darker and the mellower side. So if you're looking for something super bright out of the box, then this might not be the series for you. However, I don't think that is a deal breaker because you can always use some EQ. You can always use some other microphone positions to kind of help you with some of the detail and the presence and the sound. But just know that the overall sound signature out of the box and in general is on the darker side of things. So you might want to be aware of that. Another big plus, though, for the series is that all of the libraries are very affordable in terms of the uh, com you know competition, right? So there are libraries ranging from, let's say, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars for individual sections even, whereas the Cinematic Studio series, I believe their libraries are consistently at $400 per orchestral section. And that is right around the middle mark um, affordable mark for orchestral samples if you're looking for deeply sampled instruments workhorse libraries that you can depend on for a lifetime i personally think it is worth the investment and uh, that that's why i purchased these strings in the first place because i just i knew that the sound and the payoff would be so much more or so much so worth it right uh, worth any like niggles i would have to deal with or anything like that but i find these libraries extremely easy to use one 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 thing i do struggle with sometimes is that if i'm doing uh, let's say, you know, a, a session. And then in the middle, I have to do a uh, this thing here where you kind of have to go in and do a batch function and then, you know, create an individual channel for each instrument. For some reason, the instruments get a lot quieter. They, they go down like 20 dB in volume. And I, I have to manually redrag the patches in from the contact libraries to bring them back up to original volume, which is kind of weird as well. <clears throat> and also sometimes if you wait too long and have the patches loaded up, Sometimes the release tails will actually just drop off for no reason. So, you know, before recording this video, I was doing some testing and I uh, I loaded up the patches. I got some food. And when I came back, I was playing them. And then I, I played a line. And then as soon as I let go, there was no release tail. There was no haul. And so it just suddenly just dropped off, you know? So that's something you might come across as well. But... The, the workaround for that is just, you know, once you play in your line, you can just print it to print it to audio and then you'll have no problems reproducing the sound from there on out. Anyway, that is the Cinematic Studio series. And oh, I have a really cool announcement actually. I was um, 
very fortunate uh, to actually work with some of these developers, some of my favorite developers that I use on a daily basis and work out some deals with them to get you an educational discount if you are a current member of my Cinematic Music Creation course. So if you don't know, I do sell um, a few online courses and I do have a membership for composers, but <clears throat> for Cinematic Music Creation, especially, which is my flagship course, um, Cinematic Studio Series and you know, CineSamples Heaviosity, these developers were very, very kind to um, offer you guys a discount for being a part of my course. So if you're interested in that and want to step up your composing orchestration game, um, you know, music theory, mixing and mastering for composers, all that stuff, all within one package, plus having access to some EDU discounts that will make your next purchases a little bit more affordable. I highly re recommend you check that out on my website, ChristopherCU.com. And uh, you can find all the, all the information there. But in any case, thank you so very much for watching. Again, I want to point you to my sample library buyer's guide. It's absolutely free but it contains all the different libraries that I use on a regular basis, organized by price and different sections. And the Cinematic Studio series is always at the top of the list because it's so easy to use, very affordable, and you will get you, 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 like, you will earn your money back from the libraries if you are a professional composer. So in any case, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.